We'll close out the show talking about a little more realignment crap, but this is a, a bit of a different topic. The Big 12, of course, yesterday there was a Texas Senate committee meeting on the future of college sports in Texas. And they are, you know, they, they, I don't know if you watched any of this, but the, the news stuff that was coming out about this was absolutely hilarious. It was constant bickering back and forth between people that went to TCU, people that went to Baylor, ADs at these different schools, and and people just ripping on Jay Hartzell, the president of Texas. They asked him when he reached out to the SEC. He said earlier this spring. And, you know, when did all of this start? Like, why did you do this? Blah, 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 blah. He came out and said, basically, we looked at what the options were with the SEC, pinned it against what's going on in the Big 12. We felt like we would be more secure staying in the SEC or moving to the SEC going forward as opposed to staying and and trying to make things work in this league and blah, 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 blah. Bob Bowlesby was there. He was talking about it, how he believes Texas went through different bylaws or or did, what is it, violated different conference bylaws, all that kind of stuff. So there's a possibility this could go to court later this year and all of the money that Texas and Oklahoma make from the Big 12 and their media rights this season could, could be forfeited to the rest of the league for the 2022 season based on whether or not they violated uh, violated bylaws. Blah, blah, blah. Long story short, it was really funny. Go read all the tweets from it. I posted a bunch yesterday. But today, Bob Bowlesby and George Klyovkov are meeting to discuss a Big 12, Pac-12 scheduling alliance. Now, Chris, have you seen anything about this today? Yeah, I saw that they, well, I just saw that they were meeting, but I didn't know what it, what was going to be the, the brunt of it. So, Scheduling makes sense. Basically, the, the you know. So Bowlesby floated it yesterday during that Texas Senate meeting. He said that the Big 12 working with another conference to aggregate their negotiating rights for the next TV deal is a big-time possibility. And then, of course, they come in today and they're talking to the Pac-12. Now, the Pac-12 already has a round-robin schedule. They only have three non-conference games available for each team because they played nine conference games. If the Big 12 stays at 8, which I don't assume that they will, but who knows at this point? I don't know that one non-conference game per team is going to be enough to help sway these TV deals. Do you feel like this adds any kind of TV value? Yes, absolutely it does. I mean, if you get good matchups, it's going to add TV value. And if you get rid of a pay-for-win and replace it with a good game, then it's going to add TV value. Absolutely, it adds TV value. But, but So my question is how much? Like, at, it, what what are we looking at between the eight leftovers in the Big 12 All right. and, and what's in the Pac-12? You're, tr- you're trying to think of Oregon and, and Ohio State, Washington and Michigan. Right. A couple big brands. We don't have that here. You need to stop that. What you're thinking of is instead of – Oregon playing, I don't know what a small school up there is, but just some 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 pay for win, some some no name school from whatever. Conference. Well, th- this year, like they're playing Fresno State early this year. All right, so. so all right, so instead of them playing Fresno State, they play TCU. That's a much bigger game. Like that's yeah. like that's marketably bigger. That's that's really moved the needle bigger. So TCU, there's a world USC, where both of those teams are ranked. Oklahoma State against Washington. Or whatever, yeah. like or, it, those, or, or USC or Arizona State or any of these schools, like it doesn't have to be the biggest brands against the biggest brands. Baylor has a fan base and and is good enough at football to matter. TCU has a fan base and is good enough at football to matter. Oklahoma State is good enough at football and has a brand that matters. Like you know, West Virginia, same thing. Like good enough at football and has a brand that matters. Iowa State right now really good at football. And, and is growing a brand. The rest of them either are not good at football or don't have a great brand. But that doesn't mean those things can't change. And watching Kansas State play Utah is still a hell of a lot better than watching Utah beat up, you know, on UNLV. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, what are we talking about? That's substantially better. Is, yeah, it, okay. is it as good as watching Utah – you know, play Texas or play Michigan or a monster brand? No, because these aren't that big of brands. But that's not what you're replacing it with. 
you're not saying, oh, you were going to play West Virginia and now you're going to play Kansas State. You were going to play UCLA and now you're going to play Kansas State. That's what we're doing. Well, so, so, yes. so I don't know that it changes those pay for wins, though. I think this just it sets them up to where they don't play the other big school, whatever it is, and the Big 12 schools just replace whoever it is, right? Like the Big 12 schools, if they stay at eight and they do round robin, they're still going to have five games that are non-conference games. They'll have seven conference games. You're working under the premise that this deal won't change what the Pac-12 does with playing the nine-game schedule either. Yeah. Yeah. Like, you're, like you're, you like you, assume that all rules that are in place right now will never be changed, and we're just going to undo this other thing. I can't imagine they would do a deal together and only play each other one game a, a year each way. Uh, Max that Olson, would, like his, that wouldn't make any sense to me. Yeah, no, you're you're right, you're right. Max Olson from the Athletic put a, a story up about this. Uh, Bowlesby said, "I think there are options for us to partner with other conferences. There may be opportunities for mergers. There may be opportunities to add members. There may be other opportunities that are currently unforeseen." And uh, one Big Twelve source told him, "At this point, all options are on the table. Nothing is a bad option. We have to explore everything now. It's not that we're in panic mode, but let's keep talking, keep finding out what's there." Another Big 12 source expects the Bullsby Klayovkov meeting to be more of an information download for the Pac-12's new commissioner to gain a better sense of what the Big 12's eight remaining members can bring to the table. Uh, time is our friend right now, so it's not like something has to happen by September 1st, the source said. It's a matter of starting to work through this and see what it looks like. We've got a runway. And that's that's right. I mean, there's there's all kinds of different things that, that you can do with this. And it, yes, it does add something. You know, a TCU... Oregon matchup, a TCU Washington matchup, something like that would definitely be entertaining. It's, TCU against every team in the Pac-12 would be better than almost any other non-conference game they're going to get. That's not one of the monster brands. Do you think you think the Pac-12 goes behind Bullsby's back and tries to take TCU? I, I mean, I don't know if they're going to try to take TCU. I, I also, I mean, I think the American is still in play to try to steal some of these teams as well. I think so too. Which is. Which is why I think Bowlesby's not reaching out to the American because the American tried the underhanded way of going with the ESPN plan to uh, to to get you know some of these teams to jump ship. Yeah, uh, Matt Miller asked, "Do uh, do we think that we ever get to the point of kicking teams out? In what world should K State not belong, but Rutgers and Vandy do?" Uh, no, I don't think so. I don't think we will ever get to relegation. Um, but that's not. Hang on now. If the if the conference dissolves, then yeah, somebody's like, got to go get Kansas. Okay. Then somebody's got to go get Kansas. Right. State. Somebody's got to go get Texas Tech. Somebody's got to find value in these places and go get them. If a conference dissolves, the SEC's never kicking out Vandy. Not because they don't want to. By the way, trust me, they want to. It's simply because Vanderbilt is an original founding member. They have more endowment money than all the other 13 SEC teams combined right now, and they have better attorneys than all the other SEC teams combined. Yeah. Nobody's kicking them out. Yeah, Show no, up and happening. try to kick them out. Tell me what happens. They're going to send you ass packing, and then they're going to send you a big-ass bill okay, for the legal fees, and you're going to pay it all. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, no, it, the, it will be crazy. It, Matt, Matt, do you think – do you think Greg Sankey gives one flabby fuck about the, the GPA <laughs> of the SEC teams? Half not, these not right kids now. can't spell GPA, all right? <laughs> uh, Brown Yeti, you see what he said? Big no. 12 versus Pac-12, a good game. Funny joke, Chris. I don't think it matters except for the top two in each league. I do think that there is I value. Disagree. There's There's value for this on, on other networks and this and that, right? If you want to bring in a full-time member, they have to be worth it. A one-off game here and there, like a, a scheduling alliance between conferences, I do think works. I mean, obviously, we see it in college basketball. Now, it's easier to do in college basketball because, I mean, they play 30-something games each per year. So, that's much easier. But if you've so, already got some of those, like, I think it would work in football as well. Matt Miller brought this up because this has been brought up before about BYU in the Pac-12 as well. The Pac-12 refuses to even consider BYU because of their religious affiliation. And the Pac-12 has been very adamant about not wanting. Yeah, so TCU and schools. Baylor, like, pretty much off limits. Like, but I mean, so that means if I'm the American, man, I am hunting those two teams like a dog with a bone. Because if they could pick up TCU and Maryland, and that'd Baylor, be, that, that'd, yeah. TCU and Baylor, sorry, that'd be massive. That would that'd be huge for the American. Yeah, 
Yeah, I, I think so as well. I, I think if you're the American, you got to grab three. And your ideal list would likely be, what, Oklahoma State, I, TCU, I think State, and Baylor? TCU, Baylor, yeah. I think so. I think that's it. If Oklahoma State jumps to the Pac-12 because they feel like they want to stay in a Power 5 conference or well, then you go get West Virginia. Yeah, yeah. This is going to be interesting. This is going to be so interesting. I have no idea what these, what all of them are thinking. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.